Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. Today is Labor Day, unofficially the end of summer here in Canada. I think you also have it in the States as well. Um, but this is of course a very important day that while now seen in Canada as nothing more than a long weekend and the last weekend of summer, it is a big part of why we have so much of what we enjoy here in Canada. Because the labor movement, as we know it, is what got us eight-hour workdays, improved health and safety and hygiene at our workplaces, time off, adequate pay, all these things and more is what the labor movement has done for Western society which for a long time resulted in the flourishing of the middle class. Now, um, so, some history here in, in Canada. Uh, the first Labor Day was September of 1894, and every Labor Day since has always been on the first Monday of September. And the earliest event of significance with regards to Labor Day in Canada was a labor demonstration in Toronto in support of striking printers in 1872. And this actually led to a very important document that's now part of Canadian law known as the Trade Union Act. And the Trade Union Act legalized unions across the nation because before they were challenging, you know, oh no, this is bad. It's a it's an illegal gathering or an illegal cessation of work. The Trade Union Act legalized trade unions, so that was very important. Uh, what was also important were some of the people who helped lead this. Um, so, for example, a lot of early trade union movements actually came out of the Nine Hour Movement, which was a movement of uh, various labor organizations who wanted to uh, have shorter work days because many were being asked to work anywhere from 12 to 16 hour work days in some cases, and they wanted at max a nine hour work day. And out of the nine hour movement came several organizations, but one of the most fascinating and interesting were the Knights of Labor. Uh, the Knights of Labor were a leading labor reform organization of the late 19th century. They wanted eight hour work days, um, but beyond just like trade stuff, they were very politically minded. Uh, some of the things that the Knights of Labor advocated for were um, improved hygiene and safety in the workplace, uh, equal pay for men and women. Um, I think they wanted a, uh, a standardized minimum wage. And they also wanted the nationalization of telegraph, telephone, uh, and public transportation services which, if it sounds communist or socialist, kind of sort of borderline is. Um, but the Knights of Labor were not really known for striking, like as, as a concept of, you know, just walking off the job and striking. Um, they tended to prefer arbitration and working with groups and forming uh, like various committees and organizations to help push for labor-friendly candidates and organizations and they even created a lobbying group uh, that would on behalf of the Knights of Labor lobby the Canadian government for improved um, uh, labor conditions for your average Canadian worker so they weren't really fond of striking but other people and organizations were which brings us to the Winnipeg General Strike of 1919 a monumental event in Canadian history in fact, it's the largest general strike in Canadian history, which is part of why it was so brutally put down. So the Winnipeg general strike happened between May 15th and June 25th of 1919, and over 30,000 workers around Winnipeg walked off the job because, again, this was 1919, right? So they're just getting out of World War I. A lot of vet veterans are coming back home, they're shell-shocked, there's no good job opportunities because the economy is winding down from the war economy. Um, there have also been more women in the workplace who don't want to leave and give up their uh, newfound position, and completely understandable. 
There were lots of uh, working class immigrants who came, especially from Europe, trying to escape the violence of the First World War. They were having difficulty finding work. And it seemed like no one was making money and getting wealthier. And there were very few jobs, but employers were making money hand over fist. And this didn't sit well with Winnipeg's diverse workforce. And so uh, various different people, including a woman named Helen Armstrong, began organizing workers and calling on various workers around the city to simply strike by walking off the factory floors, not showing up for their various uh, jobs, whether it had to do with public transit, city services, uh, mail delivery, all these different things. Workers walked off the job. Now, um, like factories, shops, transit, city services shut down, but solidarity with this movement was also shown by firemen, postal workers, telephone and telegraph operators, and even police. Now, this brings us to a different version of the police who were not so supportive. The RCMP. So the government of Canada, seeing this large labor movement erupting in the center of the country, they were very afraid that this would spread to even larger and arguably more important centers of industry like Montreal, Hamilton, Toronto, Quebec City, Vancouver. There was a fear from the government of Canada that several of these workers who had set up, you know, labor kitchens and uh, like helpful organizations, freely sharing and aiding the downtrodden among them, they were afraid that these calls for a general strike were just a front for revolution and that they aimed to topple the government. And the strikers in Winnipeg had planned to rally more people from Western Canada and Eastern Canada to march on the cities and demand better uh, conditions for labor workers and workers in general. Fearing this, the government of Canada sent the RCMP out against the um, protesters who were striking. And on June 21st, which would go down in Canadian history as Bloody Saturday, the RCMP shot live rounds into the crowd and they charged at them on horseback um, using like batons and clubs and things like that. Two protesters died and 30 were injured and at least 10 labor leaders were arrested, seven of whom were charged with attempting to overthrow the Canadian government and were sentenced to, I think, six months in jail. Uh, and that promptly ended the strike. Now, while the strike is definitely a failure in the sense that it didn't um, accomplish anything except becoming a note in a history book, what it did do is unite the labor and working movement in Canada. After this, whether you were English, French, born and raised Canadian, or an immigrant Canadian, so long as you were a worker, you were more unified and had a lot in common in terms of class solidarity and class struggle with your fellow worker. Whether you were a factory worker, a postal worker, a shopkeeper, a utility worker, a telephone or a telegraph line operator, there was real worker solidarity following the Winnipeg general strike, which would eventually, as we know, uh, result in several decades of additional striking and arbitration with governments, both provincial and federal. Uh, in fact, it would lead directly to the rise of the CCF, which would eventually become the NDP, which is the most pro-labor and arguably most left-wing party that Canada has. And all this would ultimately culminate in improved labor relations and um, union membership that would see a flourishing of the Canadian middle class post-World War II. This is why unionization and labor is important, which is why it's very important here in Canada that there are murmurings about members of the gig economy beginning to unionize. And this is very important to keep in mind moving forward. A lot of our change 
doesn't come at the ballot box. It comes from direct action and stopping the wealthy from getting their money and their investments, which to them is like crack cocaine. If you stop them from getting that, they get mad and they start petitioning the governments to do things. Either answer your demands or to crack down, which really only galvanizes more people over time. So with this in mind, I wish everyone a very happy Labor Day. But I also wish that more people knew the history of labor here in Canada and why it's so important and why it continues to be important to this day. But the fact that so many don't and treat this as just the last good fun long weekend of summer is what's bothering me today.